Batman has a huge amount of supporting cast members. The Bat family can feel infinite at times. It's ever expanding, ever growing. And while that may be a bit of a hyperbolic statement, it is amusing that a character that has a reputation for working alone has actually rarely done so. And historically was the character to start the sidekick boom. The kid sidekick boom, that is. But not all members of Batman's ancillary cast are superheroes. Some are civilians. One of the most beloved side characters to enter Batman lore is Alfred. Known to most as not just Batman's butler, but a father figure to Bruce Wayne. A skilled and multifaceted mentor. But that is not how the character began life. In fact, his origins were different and a tad convoluted. Just a smidge. The Alfred most have come to know was not the first Alfred. Before Alfred Pennyworth, there was Alfred Beagle. And he looked quite different from the Alfred most are familiar with, at least at the start. But then it was quickly altered due to bleed back. Or perhaps the version that bled back was always meant to be the first Alfred. It's a fascinating tale starring an Alfred that has been forgotten by many. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and let's cast back the golden age and look at the arrival of Alfred. Alfred the butler, he didn't have a last name when he first arrived on the scene, debuted in Batman number 16 in 1943 in the story Here Comes Alfred, written by Don C. Cameron with art by Bob Kane. Insert your skepticism over the latter half of that statement here. Interestingly, as mentioned, there's some contestation as to whether or not this version was supposed to debut first or whether the version on the TV serial was meant to come first and whether this was a commissioned tie-in. Some evidence suggests that that may be the case and it's discussed in the Batman Complete History book from 1999. Regardless of the order of things, Batman TV serial from the 1940s also debuted an Alfred character. And that version was played by William Austin, which would come to have a big impact on the comic character and just the popularity of the character overall. People really liked the William Austin Alfred. Now, the Alfred who debuted in comics was unlike the version most are used to seeing. He was short, rotund, and he had a lot of traits present in comic relief side characters of the time. He was a bit bumbling, causing problems, but getting out of them through tomfoolery and shenanigans. Alfred came over during the war years to be a butler to Bruce Wayne and his ward Dick Grayson. And we spent some time getting to know him in this issue and setting up the dynamic. This is very much meant to be a story with a humorous edge. Two is a perfect fighting team and three is a crowd in the case of Batman and Robin. And what a crowd when the third is the singular gentleman you are about to meet, landing in the midst of violence after a violent crossing of many oceans, nonchalantly attracting violence wherever he moves. This amazing fellow gives America's ace crime smashers the most violent surprise of their lives. Take a shot every time they say violent. How was his arrival? Was it violent? I can't tell. And makes them like him for it. You have never before encountered anyone quite like him, but you'll be eager to see him again. And now sit tight, for here comes Alfred. With build up like that, get hype. I like that he has the Sherlock Holmes influence there. There's a lot of Sherlock Holmes influence in early Batman. Alfred, as you can probably glean from that image on the teaser page, is an amateur sleuth. How to be a detective in 10 easy lessons. So you're a sleuth. And rather good at it if I do say so. Hmm, I've known all along there was something mysterious about that gentleman. Yeah, original Alfred was meant to be Cockney, but it's written in a very aggressive Mockney accent, giving me Mary Poppins vibes. Hello there, governor. Now, as Alfred arrives, he really does bring the action. He's very quickly mugged, and then Batman and Robin have to swoop in and save him because they were staking out some gangsters at the port. Alfred, however, manages to hold his own and impresses Batman and Robin a little bit in doing so. And while the villains escape, Batman, Robin, and Alfred have their first encounter. Alfred very much wants to become involved with Batman and Robin. He thinks he could really help them because he has some great detective skills. They, however, are not overly interested. Batman pulls this ultra sassy maneuver of saying, sure, why not? Alfred could come over and discuss it, but then doesn't give him his address. Batman be like, yeah, I'll call you. Later, as the adventurers prepare to go to bed, that was a good one, Bruce, telling him to call on us when nobody knows who the Batman and Robin are or where they live. Oh well, maybe he fancies he's smart enough to find us. Imagine a dimwit like him finding us when some of the smartest men in the world have tried and failed. Ring! Doorbell! Oh, someone's at the door! I'll answer it. Golden Age Robin is something else. The sheer savagery. And of course, as you can glean from this, Who's at the door? It's Alfred. Womp womp. We very much got that classic kind of one, two setup punchline going with the comedy. But it's layered because Alfred's not there because he figured out who they were, much to their relief, but because he's here to actually work for Bruce Wayne. He shows up and proclaims that he's Bruce's new butler and there's no room for argument. He's gonna do it. Butler, but I haven't had one in years. I didn't send for one and I'm afraid I don't want one. We found we can get along better without servants of any kind. It may be a bit awkward at first, sir, but I dare say you'll get used to me. So backstory time. 
Alfred's father was Jarvis, who was the butler to Batman's father, I mean Bruce Wayne's father. He broke his father's heart when he decided he didn't want to butthole and instead wanted to become an actor and left to do that. But now his father's dead, and so he's come to fulfill the family legacy. See, all of this is just like the second Alfred, but with extra steps. All of this is playing out, of course, as misunderstanding and buffoonery, even if there are some salient details and some stronger emotional beats sprinkled throughout. Now, as mentioned, Alfred just jumps in, and Bruce actually feels a bit sorry for him, so decides he can't just send him home, at least not that night. He can stay for at least one night. What's gonna happen, aside from him finding out that they're Batman and Robin? Because, of course, living in the same house as Bruce and Dick, it doesn't take him long to figure it out. But even so, it's an accident. During a fight, Alfred accidentally triggers a mechanism for the secret door of the Batcave. Because there are people who are coming after him, they're after his briefcase, he was wandering around looking for Bruce and Dick, didn't find them, and instead stumbles upon the Batcave. Alfred is thrilled that he's discovered it and feels that this makes them very lucky indeed that he's their butler. That's the tone of this. It's just, ooh, aren't they lucky to have me, Alfred but then there's also that kind of bumbling element. So he decides he's gonna help them. I mean, he wanted to since the start of the story anyway, and thus begins the dynamic of him inserting himself into their adventures and often having silly moments or being helpful through comedic happenstance. They end up stopping the villains, and then the following evening, Alfred's pretty proud since we gave him full credit for this case. I really thought he'd done a great job of detecting until it turned out he got all of his information by accident. For a while, I was afraid he'd find out who we really are, but if we're careful, it will be safe to let him stay since he he isn't too bright. Beg pardon, sirs. You'll be going out directly, and I thought I might assist you with your uniforms, governor. What's this? Huh? Uh, those cloaks! What, what does this mean? Wow, I can't believe the man who lives with us figured out our secret identities. Maybe you're not too bright, Rob. Well, you're one of us now, Alfred. I hope you realize that if your knowledge leaked out, Robin's life and mine would be forfeit. Criminals would have an easier time of it. I like that he put Robin first. Most likely it's just for the manipulation factor, the feel bad. And so Alfred's position is secure. And he's happy that they're impressed with him. And he's definitely not going to tell them that he found out their identities by accident. Keep an eye on Alfred. You haven't seen the last of him. Batman works alone. That's why by 1943, he already had two stable supports who knew who he was. Now, Alfred was well on his way to becoming a staple, thanks in no small part to the character's popularity on the TV serial. People loved that version of Alfred, and the character in comics was changed to accommodate. Now, as mentioned in the serial, Alfred went by Alfred the Butler. And the last name, Beagle, wouldn't be introduced introduced until Detective Comics 96 in 1945, and you may note that he now looks quite different than he did in his first outing in Batman 16. That's because his appearance was changed to line up with the television show. And there is a whole issue explaining how that happened. This was in Detective Comics 83 in 1944, in the story Accidentally on Purpose. Bruce and Dick find Alfred working out, and when they talk to him about it, he says that actually he's been feeling a bit run down with all of his duties, and so Bruce offers him a vacation. Where does he want to go? But Alfred already has a place in mind. He's secretly gonna go to a health spa, which of course gave me flash forwards to that Batman TAS episode, Eternal Youth. I still owe Bruce Wayne for his involvement with that slash and burn outfit. But for now, I'm content to settle for his friends. It works out better than that episode though. Or does it? When he comes back from this health spa, he looks more like the Alpha design we're more familiar with. It's really disconcerting. He looks like an entirely different character. He lost so much weight in such a short span of time. Is he okay? And he also grew a mustache. But he still has that same in-comic persona, that is, book-loving, clumsy, and getting into all kinds of whimsical antics. And he would go on to have adventures trying to hone his skills, but oft times getting in the way and helping slash succeeding through luck. The comic relief vibe that he's providing was very much in line with supports that you would see during that time period. In fact, he's pretty tame compared to some of the others that were out there. Some of them were even drawn in different styles and just felt like they'd come straight out of a slapstick comedy serial a la Three Stooges, which of course was very popular at the time. However, because Alfred isn't quite so extreme, he fits in a bit better overall without sticking out so much, at least in retrospect. So what happened? How did this Alfred, who featured so prominently in both Batman and Detective Comics, become the Alfred Pennyworth version, and why? The Alfred we're more familiar with is traced back to Batman 92 in 1955, but that needs some clarification. This is also the issue that introduces Ace the Bat Hound. Things get a little bit wonky here based on what was happening in the time period and probably because this was a confirmation of things happening on Earth 1. 
let me explain. This issue would retroactively be firmly established as Earth 1. For once what Earth 2 is is described, it's easy to distinguish which adventures took place on which Earth. And if the Earth 1 Alfred is established as Alfred Pennyworth, then it's easy to see where the divide occurs. But you could also probably have assigned a couple of other issues as the firm start, but this issue 92 is as good as any in the early Silver Age. It's a fairly smooth transition, and hey, you get Ace the Bat Hound. In this issue, he's once more just called Alfred the Butler, and we're now in the Silver Age, so some shenanigans are expected. But Alfred doesn't quite have the same personality. He's not trying to help out, and he's barely a character. In this issue, he's in one panel. But as we are entering the Silver Age, we're also entering the time of two Earths. Earths 1 and 2, with it being established that Earth 2 was the home of the characters from the Golden Age. As the launching of the Comics Code had wrought major changes in the industry, and this was coupled with the fact that superheroes had declined in popularity post-war, so companies had to do something. And DC had a very bold response, which was to redesign some of their core characters. And they had great success with Barry Allen, the Silver Age Flash, replacing Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash. And so they would go on and go forward. Barry Allen would also be the one to vibrate to Earth 2 when the story Flash of Two Worlds in 1961. Now, while some characters were altered, that didn't happen with Batman and Superman. They continued on. And so the transition for them was softer. So it was established that different Earths could have different versions of the same character, as already evidenced by the two Flashes, two Green Lanterns, and of course, the two Batman and Superman. So there was already much groundwork for two Alfreds. And from there, things start changing in little pockets until we get to Crisis on Infinite Earths. Like, how he discovers their identities is now retold in Batman 110 in 1957. Now it's him hearing an injured Bruce and coming to help out. Alfred's last name is changed in issue 216 to Pennyworth in 1969. And it's not treated as a change or anything, it's just kind of presented like that was always his name. Hmm, my older brother Wilfred Pennyworth, a veteran thespian in this traveling repertory company. Why hasn't he contacted me? First time here and we haven't seen each other in so long. You'd think I'd be the first person he'd want to see. Well, we Pennyworths have our pride. If for whatever reason he chooses not to call me, I shan't approach him. Take that, Alfred's heretofore unseen older brother. Different elements are tweaked or expanded upon. Like Alfred being an intelligence agent is really explored in the early 1980s, particularly 1981. He's also given a daughter at that point. In general, he's just moved into being a much more serious character as we enter the Bronze Age in the early 1970s. The bumbling element is gone. The Cockney accent is no longer written in, giving him a more posh, in quotes, air. The TV series The Super Friends would introduce the idea that he had helped to raise Bruce. The comic Superman family would confirm that the Earth 2 Alfred, so Golden Age, was Alfred Beagle. This in issue 211, in one of the adventures of Mr. and Mrs. Superman stories, which were the adventures of a married Clark and Lois. They were fun. Crisis on Infinite Earths would introduce or canonize many of the elements that are now Alfred's staples, such as raising Bruce, always having worked for the Waynes, but still the actor and intelligence agent aspects would remain. Basically, it was an attempt to fuse everything together, which made sense as part of Crisis on Infinite Earths involved crushing the multiverse. So if you wanted a detail there, you had to find a way to work it in. A lot of characters were altered in this time period to the versions that are more well known today. Time of recording. But the name Beagle would still find its way into post-crisis iterations, both Crisis on Infinite Earths and Infinite Crisis, as potentially being used as a stage name or as an agent name, some kind of pseudonym. However, the idea of two separate Alfreds was not done. Because the multiverse didn't stay gone, and even before Infinite Crisis would firmly reinvigorate it, it would still find itself played with. In, for example, Zero Hour, Crisis in Time. During that event, there were fluctuations in the time reality barriers that caused certain past continuity elements to manifest. And for Batman, that meant Shadow of the Bat, issue 31. In 1994, there was a whole issue that saw modern Dark Age Batman and Tim Drake Robin having to hang out with a Golden Age Alfred Beagle. If you look at this Alfred, it's most likely an earlier appearance as he still has that old classic appearance before he went to that health spa. It's a pretty fun issue and they have a good time lovingly poking fun at some of the slapstick comedy of the Golden Age and it plays well against this really angst ridden going through it Batman. Of course, by this point, the Pennyworth version was deeply ingrained and some may not have been aware of the first version or even know there was a different name. It's not like they went around calling him Alfred Beagle all the time. The transition between the two is pretty seamless, at least initially. As for the evolution of Alfred as a character, a lot of that seems to do with just the change in expectations of side characters over time, and just shifts in the genre. He was a very popular part of Batman's lore and featured in adaptations where his popularity continued to expand, so still using the character throughout the Silver Age and onward made sense. Even though they cut him back in the Silver Age, they didn't try to memory hole him in the same way they did the OG Batwoman and Batgirl, and by they I mean Julia Schwartz. It did help that while a humorous character Alfred Alfred also had defined personality traits outside of clumsy. He was also loyal, keen to help, motivated, 
lots of things one could lean into, and they did with much success. So that is the tale of two Alfreds, Alfred Beagle and Alfred Pennyworth. Were you aware that there were two? What did you think of the Alfred Beagle version? How do you feel about the evolution? Share all of your thoughts and feelings down below. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things like share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. If you know of any other interesting character evolutions you'd love to hear me talk about, let me know that too down below. And thanks so much for taking a start on our day to spend it discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.